I don't know much about cars or how they work, but I know they got wheels and that's all you need to go fast. In a nutshell, this is what's happening today. What they've done here is they've rigged the entire car to be a video game controller. The steering wheel, the gas pedal, it's gonna be a real functioning car, all used to control a virtual reality video game. Be driving in real life, doing everything 100% for real. The only thing that won't be real is the course that we will be driving on. Mike Viva has so many friends. He's a professional partier. Sometimes you have a couple friends over usually. He invites hundreds. <laughs> and it even got to the point where I think he kind of got evicted or kicked out of one of his last houses because the parties started getting too big. The cops would call too many times. So rather than holding parties at his house, he utilizes warehouses. Has moved on to like actually hosting personal parties at venues. There was like, I think at least 200 people at his birthday party last night, so. Now, it's the morning after it. I feel like a million bucks. Now we have to race car. we have to drive some little race cars around. We do a lot of VR stuff. I know a lot about it. At this scale, like how the heck are you getting 3D spatial tracking data for this vehicle and all this stuff? I figured out how they're doing it. The first thing they're using to track the car's position is not too much of a surprise. There's a GPS system. That's the foundation. So basically it starts with a GPS, but it's a lot more accurate than your phone. But that's not how we're actually getting accurate, like true movement of the vehicle. That's not being recorded through that. They have tapped in to the car ABS system, the traction control system for the car. And the internal computer in the vehicle is gonna send that car's positional data out. It is, it's accurate enough to tell exactly how far it's moving in any direction. That is where the actual fine detail car position data is coming from. It's crazy to say, think, think about that. A computer inside the vehicle is able to tell where it is in 3D space simply by judging the speed of the wheels. There's also gonna be an augmented reality headset they're using, which is cool. Two little screens with mirrors that you can see, all that stuff, and uh, apparently this thing's got a little juice to it. Oh, let's get some lunch. We came here two hours early. Me? Oh. Hey guys. Remember that thing we worked on all the spring called Lifeline? Today is the day that we lock the rest of the edits. Locking the edit is when you've sat there and you've chopped all your footage, and then you go through and you make all the adjustments, you adjust it yourself, you show it to an audience, they give you critiques, make all your adjustments, make all your cuts, and you keep doing this over and over and over until it's perfect. And when you lock your edits, Ideally, that means it's perfect. And they have to do sound and music and visual effects, QC, legal clearances, and ADR. But you know what? None of, that, none of that stuff matters because locking the edit is like the biggest step you can take with a project outside of post-production. We've already locked the first five episodes and I'm going off today to lock the remaining three and then it's done. Big moves, big steps. A bunch of people are probably wondering when Lifeline comes out. We don't know for sure, maybe like October or something like that. I don't know. YouTube might get mad at us if we tell you anything else, but whatever, screw it. I think it's around October. <laughs> I'm tired of all the secrecy. I hope it's not a train wreck when I go in to try to lock the edits. <laughs> Little adjustments are happening all over the place, and you go in and you fix some things, and somebody else works. And every once in a while, you go in to discover that the stuff you spent like two days fixing just like got ignored. We'll see if that happened. <laughs> Oh. Just waiting around. No shoot would be complete without technical issues. A million reasons why that's happening. It's cool actually. They're they're running the whole thing through Unity, pumping all the data into Unity and outputting it as well. So as someone who's dabbled in that software, it's really impressive to see how how flexible of a engine it is. Until then catch up some on some emails with my new phone. It's a Google Pixel. Okay, so here's a funny story. Yesterday when we came here for the rehearsal, there's tons and tons tons and tons of flies. There's slightly less today. The reason for the flies was because this hangar was actually abandoned and a bunch of birds were housed in it and like were flying it and living in here. Also birds were dying in here. But when I first came in here like two weeks ago to start setting up, the floor was littered with dead birds and there were flies like mad, so they had to pressure wash it and take clean up all the dead birds and they said, even till this very day, dead birds still sometimes randomly fall out of the rafters here. So this is Sam's live race. He's gonna be ghost racing other drivers. Are you then we're gonna bring up our first. Yeah. What's up, I'm if Sam not, oh, Horsky, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Cordo Digital YouTube channel. We've been making videos about action and new 
funny thing is, we actually we actually did a video a while back uh, on our Sam and Nico channel. I've driven a car with video screens attached to my eyes, unable to see the road. So. <laughs> a, little, a little cocky, I'm gonna say. <laughs> with Sam yesterday, we were discussing things about the track and the course. What was what was the thing he mentioned he wanted to use? So, is there an emergency brake? Right. <laughs> my plan. So on my practice run, I was really aggressive because I just wanted to drive the car and drive it real fast. But as I kind of went through it, I started realizing, wait a second, this is a game. You have to game the game. You have to play by its rules, not yours. I might not do the most aggressive run for my actual times here. I'm going to try and do the cleanest run, not the fastest one. Because the time, they add time penalties, and they're pretty severe. Play it nice and smooth, might actually have a ch shot at this. And so, so what you're seeing is not necessarily a, a video stream of what I'm doing, but a data stream of where my car's position is. And there, they have an exact, exact duplicate du of the level, which oh. they're rendering, rendering out, out in real, real time. time. Remember, remember to breathe, Sam. Remember, remember, remember to breathe. breathe. ...really well, so it's cool to see him be able to utilize his street... Uh, or his, Here we go. Smash uh, that wow button. ...gaming system, as well as his previous experience... Oh, man, I'm off the track, track again? Yeah. Dang it. Oh, he's in the lava. Man, I'm going to lose so many points. And he's back into the laser lights of love, back into the hangar. Very aggressive, coming in. Oh, there's no points in What do we say? That was really cool. You got a car in an empty parking lot, you just rev it. Oh, it's fine, it's fine, because, like, the car's moving at the same speed your motion. No motion sickness. Oh, well, well. That's good. Awesome. So this is where we, uh, this is where we find out the results. All right, so... Okay, yeah. in second place, Mod. Oh! So Sam got first, Mod got second, Zachary Levi got third, and Dom Esposito got fourth. Yes. So before penalties, oh, are they going to do penalties? Before penalties, the, penalties. Penalties. the numbers. Winners are the high. same. Order. All right. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Because this speech. Everyone was really, really competitive, though, and it, it, it was actually really intimidating. Okay, so that was incredibly hard because this whole elaborate system they're putting together, it works pretty well, but once you start gunning it, it starts to fall apart just a little bit. But that's obviously because this is like super DIY, you know? Uh, it's it's super, super, super impressive. But, I, you know, I think really, only real improvement right now I'd really offer is for viewers, for other people watching. Because right now, when I'm in the headset, I get to see it all, I feel it all, it's super cool. But really, what they need to be, they need to get that feed from the headset onto the screen so you guys can see the driver's POV. There's a little bit of latency going through the Wi-Fi and the data that's being transferred here. So I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, you want any gaming channel. You've seen the player's perspective, so to speak. Super cool experience, though. Being able to drive this car, being able to freewheel it out in the middle of a, a giant, like, uh, a giant concrete, whatever this is, a giant lot. It's the kind of stuff, like, when I'm bored or whenever I find a giant empty parking lot, I go whip shitties around in it, you know? Being able to do this as part of my day job is an absolute blessing. Just wanted to thank the Acura guys for hooking this up and setting this all up. Hopefully, we get to do something like this again in the future because this is super, super cool. This is the kind of stuff we live for. Here we go. Turning off traction control in your car. That'll help. <laughs> yeah. If I had a choice of what I would do on my Monday, I, uh, I would definitely choose racing a car, a real car in a virtual environment. <laughs>